raise rabbits for food, for meat. Um, and it's very, very easy. They reproduce like rabbits. And it's a piece of cake and I've got a bunch of scrap materials here and I can make myself a rabbit tractor that will cut down on the food costs of raising these rabbits. If you feed your rabbits just pellets, they eat a lot of pellets. They go through them pretty quick, especially if you've got a bunch of bunnies. Um, but if you can make a tractor and allow them to graze on the clovers and plantains and all the other weeds and stuff that's growing around in your property, um, it can cut down on food costs. And that's what we're gonna do today. I tell you what, anytime you're messing around with metal, always look for snakes, especially in the summertime because they love getting underneath the metal just because it retains some of its heat. Um, and if you were trying to catch snakes, if that was your goal is to have a, a snake trap, just lay a piece of metal out on, on the grass and you'll find some, guaranteed. Now the first thing that we need to do is just decide how big to make this thing. Um, the rabbit tractor that I've used before, the one that I built a few years in the past and recently gave it away to somebody else that's raising rabbits, um, was about four by eight. And it worked pretty good. Um, I could drag it around and move it around the yard pretty well, but my kids definitely could not. It was just too big and too heavy. So I think I'm gonna make this one significantly smaller. So I've gotten a lot better at planning ahead when doing projects like this and measuring things out and making sure I'm not making mistakes so I don't have to go back and recut things and remeasure and that kind of stuff. And just as I was about to tell that to you guys and say that to the camera, I go and do something like that. <laughs> I'm so, such an idiot. That right there is why you wear safety glasses when using a little brad nailer like this, or any kind of nail gun for that matter, and why you don't put your fingers close to where you're nailing, if at all possible, because they shoot out all crooked like that sometimes, and I've had them nick my fingers before. I could easily spend all day doing some kind of a project like this and trying to make it perfect and getting all my joints flawless and square and true and all that. And But it's just not worth my time. I've got other things to do. So I'm making this rabbit tractor good enough. I get it done and it works. It's going to last just as long as if, uh, if I was to take a full day to make it. Rain delay. So what I've got to do now is create a barrier um, to separate females from males because I only put the females with the males when I want them to breed and have, have little bunnies. Um, but like during the winter time, for example, I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure that they stay separate. And putting a piece of plywood in the middle is also just a good way to um, 
have a place to secure their waters uh, and then their their pellet uh, pellet tray. That's funny. This is a leftover roll from the last time I did this. And it ended up, I haven't cut it. This is just what was left over. This is exactly the right amount of chicken wire. That's, that's awesome. It's cool when things work out like that. Not planned. Just good luck. So when you buy chicken wire, it comes in rolls like this and it's wrapped up in, in a wire like this, just a single single strand wire. And I always save this wire because inevitably holes are gonna happen in your, in your chicken wire, in your rabbit tractor or what have you, especially in the floor where the rabbits like to dig and stuff. Um, and this is an excellent way to patch it. So I always save these little pieces. So now that we got it all wired up, we gotta put some skis on the thing because when you're dragging it around the yard, um, this wire mesh, this chicken wire will get hung up on everything and little sticks and stuff, rocks and stuff sticking up out of the ground and it will tear your chicken wire off. And plus it just doesn't slide that easy. And these skis, these runners that I'm gonna secure on here are gonna make it much, much easier to slide across the ground. Very sturdy, perfect. Slides nice and easy. Now we just need to make a lid. I had to take a quick break. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I got some buddies that come over and we do a workout together and today's was a good one. A lot of uh, load carrying today. I ran with a 25 kilo plate on my back and did probably a total of I don't know, not quite a mile, probably a little less than a mile, uh, carrying that and doing some calisthenics and stuff with the plate. So it was a pretty good workout. But anyway, finishing up the door here or the lid, I built this little frame that I'm going to attach the metal to. Um, we've got to attach a couple hinges so we can lift the lid kind of in this fashion like that and access the food and water and just get the rabbits out when needed.
This one's named Floppy. Can you tell why? <laughs> Go. And that's that. Well, rabbit tractor is finished. Let's say it took me, I don't know, maybe three hours or so, something like that. Um, and now the rabbits are gonna be, I think, much happier in this than in just their cage over there. I parked their cage over top of our compost pit um, so they could poop right in it and just add to the compost. But um, in the meantime, when the grass is going, growing green and crazy like it is right now, might as well let them eat the clovers and grass and whatever they want, let them forage and cut down on pellet costs. Um, and then I'll put them together when I want them to breed and make little baby bunnies. Well, thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one.